you were designed to dominate. Obey God, embrace the blessing and allow it to take you to the top. To order your copy of this powerful message, Rising to the Top on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4, contact us online at BillWinston.org. You can also call us at 1-800-711-9327. God wants you to prosper and to be in a place of influence so you can fulfill His covenant and lead others to Christ. Are you willing to be sold out, to stand out? The blessing guarantees a lifetime of prosperity that will extend for generations. But you must see God as your only source. Stay in faith and maintain your integrity as you rise to the top. Get your copy of this dynamic teaching today. As our special offer for the month of November, receive Dr. Winston's special Kings and Priests Empowerment Combo Pack. In it, you will learn key biblical principles to develop your faith and understand your unique calling or assignment. This bundle includes Dr. Winston's best-selling book, Faith and the Marketplace, plus volumes one through six of the Kings and Priests series, which is the foundational teaching that inspired the Faith and the Marketplace book. We are also including bonus messages from Character and Integrity Volume 1 series. That's a total of 25 life-changing teachings. The CD and book combo, which is normally priced at $183, is only $115. The DVD and book combo, which is normally $223, is only $135. That's a savings of over 35% off. To order, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or order online at BillWinston.org. The Kings and Priests Empowerment Combo Pack will help you build your faith and walk into the destiny that God has for you. Get this must-have combo pack today. Remember, this offer is for the month of November only. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. For your love gift of $15 or more, the Word Network will send you this beautiful Golden Crown keychain covered with sparkling rhinestones and a pink gem in the center. Crowns are mentioned throughout Scripture, from anointing kings to Jesus wearing a crown of thorns on the cross, symbolizing royalty, honor, status, consecration, and position. Isaiah 62, 3 says, You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Carry this elegant keychain as a wonderful reminder of your faith. Order one for yourself, your family, and friends. It's a perfect gift for any occasion. Call now. Call 855-730-WORD. That's 855-730-9673. Thank you for supporting the Word Network. Because of your generous love gifts, we're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and hurting world. broke with God than to be balling with somebody who is demonically assigned. Each loss grants you the opportunity to be greater than before. This is a Word Network special presentation. He's the ruler 
I hear those joy bells. Joy bells. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Oh, y'all can go now. All right. Welcome. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Touch your neighbor and tell him I got a feeling something good is about to happen to you. Not later on, but this very moment. This very Jesus of Nazareth. I'm coming, Keisha. She told me to have church. I hear those doorbells. All right. All right. All right. I'm Bishop Greg Davis. That's how I'm supposed to act. Welcome to the welcome to the service. But if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side, I all messed up and everything. If it had not been. Some of y'all perfect, but I'm talking about I. Welcome to Let the Healing Begin. God's about to heal your body tonight. Only believe all things are possible if you only believe. I do believe. I do believe that all things are possible. Possible it is. It is possible tonight. 855-730-WORD. Yeah, play it. There are some precious men and women of God that are standing by right now. Shatamashe. To pray for you right now. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. We didn't come here to waste time tonight. I have come to wage war on the devil. And to tell you that whatever the devil told you, he's a liar. And I'm going to go old school like your mama was saying. And the truth ain't in him. You shall live and not die. Somebody get up from there and live. Look and live, my brother. Look and live. Prophet Albertus Johnson, Pastor Dana Berry, Prophet Luther McKinstry, our team tonight. I sense the Lord tonight in this place. I want you right now to begin to pick up the phone. We're going to call your names out, prayer requests. I'm sending them there in a little while to go pray for you along with those precious men and women of God. What sickness is in your body tonight? There's nothing too hard for God. I'm looking at precious sister Audrey, a supporter of, of my ministry. She flew in to be here, and God healed the body. You can't make her. You can't, right there, waving her hand right there. You can't make her doubt him. She know too much about him. And oh, yeah, nah, nah, nah. don't you do that. Don't you do that. Nah, 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 say, nah, nah, nah. People say, I don't believe this stuff that these preachers be saying, I'm a living witness. This woman of God played my CD, let the healing begin over and over and over again until God healed her body. She's in the studio. She's a walking, living miracle tonight. If God did it for her, come here, prophet. You were sharing with me, prophet Alvernus Johnson, give it up for him tonight. Hey, stage four cancer ain't nothing too hard from God. Stop making funeral plans until they're dead, and even when they die, still hold on because he can resurrect. Prophet, you go in Africa, they believe in resurrecting the dead. They bring them to the church from the morgue. They bring them what? To the church from the morgue. The problem with us, we too sophisticated. We, we too trusting in our gadgets. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. 
prophet shared a testimony. There's a mother in our church, a dear mother. We call her Mama Linda. And Mama Linda was diagnosed with cancer. And just last Tuesday, she had a setback. And they rushed her to the hospital, incoherent. And her kidneys and other organs had shut down. The doctors told us to stop praying. They said, stop giving the family hope because it's not if, but when she'll die. Well, God spoke to us and said, I'm going to show you a miracle. To make a long story short, I went to the hospital this afternoon before coming here to the studio. And the doctors walked in. And first of all, Mama Linda was aware, talking, alert. They did an MRI last night because they were afraid her brain had died while she was unconscious. But her brain is fully functioning and she's never been sick. And wait a minute. They put a call in for a special kidney doctor to come in to check her kidneys. And the doctor said, there's no way for her kidneys to ever recover. They're gone. But today. Today. They walked in the room with a team of doctors and said, we don't know what happened. But your kidneys are fully functioning at 100%. I want you to understand, we are stepped into a miracle tonight. And whatever you're going through, I want you to know this will be a night of a turnaround. And the Holy Ghost said, tell the people that tonight is the night of your supernatural turnaround. Oh, he found it. Not stage one. Not stage two. No, sir. Not stage three. Final stage. Four. On the way to hospice. That's right. They had signed her up for hospice. They, and they tried to make her sign a do not resuscitate form. And the family stood on her wish and said, no, we're not going to sign that. And when they said send her home, we can't do nothing else for her. And she was, she was at the final. And the doctor said to us, he says, I, I know your faith. I understand y'all believe in that. But there is nothing that can happen for this woman. And 24 hours later, and I'm telling you right now, there's an anointing in this room for a 24-hour turnaround. And whatever you're going through, I guarantee you, if you can praise him right now, in the next 60 seconds, God is going to send an anointing to turn every situation in your life around. And today, she's talking. Wait. Then she had, because they were feeding her through all these tubes. <laughs> and today, for the first time, she, she was talking. She asked for water. And her, her, her blood pressure was being regulated by a machine. And they took the machine off and her blood pressure is regular. Her sugar was being regulated by a machine. And they're unplugging that machine. When I tell you this woman started to move her feet that she had moved in weeks. She said, I'm taking it step by step. And she told the doctor, if God can heal my toe, he can heal my bladder. Today is your day for a miracle. Oh, prophet. Bishop, as, as I was sitting there today, I was asking the Lord, what is the Lord doing today? And he, this is what the Lord was sharing with me. He said, tonight I'm going to show the people on who I am to them. In, 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 in the ninth chapter of John, there was, a, there was a region where a man lived where he had an acute cancer, an acute, excuse me, blindness. And his acute blindness, you know, there's the, um, the eyeballs wasn't formed and things wasn't formed right with his eyes, eyebrows and everything else. And, and, G, and they asked Jesus a question. Did his mother or father sin? Who he says, no, in order for God to get the glory in this situation. Some people have to be sit, put in some dilemmas in order for them to know who God really is. In it. another words, how in the world would you know him as a healer if none of his people have never been sick? How would you know him as a provider if none of his people have never been broke? And, and so the Bible says, so Jesus says, you know what? Uh, before Abraham, I am. And, and, and he said, so Jesus went back to Genesis 1 on them. He, he spit on the ground and, and, and the dust out of, the, out, of the, out of man was made out of the dust of the earth. And the Bible says that he anointed his eyes. Tonight, anointing is coming to your house. He's getting ready to anoint you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Then Jesus did something else interesting. He took away his crutch. He, he, with no human intervention, he says, now go, go wash your eyes in the pool of sin. And as he went 
to go wash his eyes. He had to go with the mud on his eyes. And what he didn't realize that the mud was manifesting his miracle. Some of you have to wear your mud to understand that your miracle is being manifested in that mud. And so, and so, and so when he washed it away, the Bible says that they did not understand. They did not recognize on who he was. They said, isn't that the same blind man who bathed? And, and so in another words, tonight, God is getting ready to do the miraculous in your life where God is getting ready to do the makeover where people ain't going to recognize on who you really is. He's going to show you on who he is to you even in your life tonight. And if you believe and receive it, you need to shout right there in your home, right now in this studio tonight. Listen, Pastor Dana is going to pray in just a minute and we're going to bring Kevin back and I'm going to preach a word to you for a few minutes. I have some great guests tonight. Bishop Victor Cousin just came in from Greece to be with us. All the way from Cincinnati. Anybody from Cincinnati? Apostle Travis Jennings is in the house. He's going to prophesy tonight. He's no stranger. He's been here before. But I want to, I'm looking for 390 of you tonight that will stand with me. 390 of you that would stand with me tonight. 390 of you that would stand with me. It's not about me just laying hands. I would be selfish. Touch your neighbor, say, the day of a one-man show is over with. Jesus, Jesus took 12 and reproduced himself. Sometime it was three, and then the 12, and then the 70, and then the multitude. I am believing God that God is raising up an army of those that will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. You went through the sickness that you went through so that you can help somebody else. Over the summertime, we designed the Bible. And people made fun of it. Yeah, I'm one of them healing by you. Know, you don't you, you you don't understand. There's no power in this leather, but there's power which between the leather. The word of God. The Bible talks about healing wings and the wings, the healing wings on the front. This is my signature for healing. And the Bible says, and he healed them all. I want to get a copy of this Bible to you today in your hand, from my hand. They've been prayed over. They've been anointed, yes. and I want to get it to you. Let me tell you something. There's four pages in this Bible that have already been chosen. Their chronological order. Scriptures of healing right here in the Bible where you can go to the hospital and people will think you know every healing scripture. They're already there in the word of God. You can be a wonder, a real wonder. They're already there. And then there are 27 other books in this Bible on the, uh, the, the word of God, on Jesus, on superstition, so that you can study. It is a study Bible. Yes, I also want to give you the Let the Healing Begin Part yes, 2. Yes. This is one of the CDs. I've done four of them. I want to get this in your hand. Actually, this is Part 3. I want to get this in your hand. Yes. I want to get it today along with our prayer cloth. You can't buy this, but it's a seed gift. Oh. Won't you stand with us tonight? with a seat of $109, $109. God tonight is speaking to many of you, say, God told me there's 390 of you. There's 300 of you tonight, right now, that will stand with me tonight, $109. Dial the number on the screen, 855-730-WORD. Now, you asked for one of the Bibles, and now it's become your Bible. It's become my main Bible. I've replaced Why? Well, because the 27 books in the back has blessed my life. And our church don't know this, so, so I'm getting ready to put myself under the bus. I've been doing a three-week series so far on sacred places and people, and it's all from this Bible. Preachers. And it's, it cuts down my study time by hours because you and your team have already done that for me, so I thank you. And so <laughs> I just add my personality and how I teach to it, but it's the Word of God. It's in the Chronicles order, and I, I'm using it now. We have four more weeks to go on that on that particular series, and all of this Bible. 
I travel with it now. I, I go away with that Bible. You took a picture of it and sent it to me. Yeah, I did. A seed gift of one hundred and nine dollars. Eight five five seven three zero word. I want to call your name out tonight throughout the program as you stand with me. I want to call Sister Audrey has us and others. I want to call your name out. A seed gift of $109. It don't go to me. It don't go to none of us. It goes that the beam that goes from here in the back of the building, that big set, those big satellite dishes as you drive around, they beam up to heaven. And this gospel shall be preached to every creature. You're not buying me a new car, a new house, a new suit. I don't get a dime. I want you to get it right now. Stand with me. If you enjoy me coming on daily at 1 o'clock, if you enjoy, let the healing begin once a month. I want the Lord to speak to the owner and say, every week, let the healing begin. So y'all help me. $109-855-730 word as you're calling. Pastor Dana, come and be that fireball preacher that you are and pray for us now. Come on and let's continue to tittle the ground. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the things that we even take for granted, the things that we haven't even said thank you for. Running water, shelter, transportation, the blood running warm through our veins, a, a sound mind. God, we thank you tonight for your goodness, for your mercy, Come for on. your loving kindness towards us. Come it's on. better than life. God, Come we on. bless you tonight Come because on. you are an on-time God. God, even when we don't even know how, you're going to make a way. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. We thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. We thank you for being our banner. We thank you for fighting for us, oh God. We praise you in this place. We praise you all over the world because you are our God. And besides you, there is none other. You are the only living God. And we praise you. We clap in your presence. We open up our mouths and we give you glory. Heal us today. Heal our minds. Heal our emotions. Heal our bodies. In the name of Jesus. Do it for your glory, God. That the devil would be defeated. And you would get the glory. That the devil would be horrified. And you would get the glory. I don't know about you, but there's something happening in the spirit. Something's moving. Something's shaking. Hallelujah. We got some men and men of God that's here tonight that brought their people. And we're going to go over to Pastor Dana. But I'm sending these two prophets to prophesy to you for a little while as you're calling in. They're going to the prayer room. As you're calling in, they're going to the prayer room. And as you're getting your Bibles, I want them to pray for you all as you're getting your Bibles, sowing that seed on 109. I'm coming back to preach the word of God. Get your Bible. Pastor Dana. Blessings to you, Bishop. We have some awesome men of God with us tonight who brought their congregations to be a part of this service tonight. We come to have church and we come to be healed. And so we bless you, Pastor Darren Pinson, for being with us tonight. What's the name of your church, man of God? Greater Queen African Methodist Episcopal Church. And of course, that we've already seen, this show is all about healing. What is God speaking to you to tell the people tonight? I believe the Lord is speaking to me and saying that we need to maximize our belief. Uh, we have the faith, a lot of us, we all, the body of Christ, have the faith. We have the faith to believe that he's the son of God, that he's been resurrected on the third day. But at the same token, do you believe when stress comes to your door? When shortages come to your door? So I believe that the Lord is speaking to us that we need to maximize our belief. Bless you, man of God. Hallelujah. Pastor Middleton, hallelujah. What's the name of your church? New Anderson Temple Missionary Baptist Church. And what is God saying? Encourage I, the people. I, I, I just really believe in my spirit. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter says, but he was wounded. Yeah. 
for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. If we can take God at his word and just believe, God has the power, we just need the faith. And I tell you, if we trust and believe God in this season, God will turn things around quickly. Somebody say quickly. Bless you. Come on, Pastor Ivory. So glad to have you. What's the name of your church? People's Church of Holiness. What is God saying to you to tell the world? Amen. I believe that the Lord is calling the church back to a season of recovery. As David had experienced in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when the Bible lets us know that he told, he began to ask God, what shall I do? Shall I pursue? God says, pursue, overtake, and recover all. I want to let somebody know that this is your season to recover all. So you ain't got to cry no more. Just go ahead on and recover all. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for recovery. Hallelujah. Bishop. Come on, put your hands together, everybody, and give God praise. The number is 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD, call now. I want you to open your Bibles to 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, 2 Kings 20, 2 Kings, the 20th chapter. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him, Bishop Cousins, and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in the truth and with the perfect heart, and have done that which is good in the sight. And Hezekiah wept sore, and it came to pass, for Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him and said turn again and tell Hezekiah uh -huh, the captain of my people thus said the Lord God of David thy father I have heard thy prayer I have seen thy tears sister Audrey behold Kurt I will heal thee on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Here's where I want to be. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and the city, this city, out of the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for mine own sake, for my servant David's sake. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And I will add. I need somebody to look down your road and say, neighbor, in the next 59 days, God is adding. Tell somebody God is adding. God is. Matter of fact, before just off the subject, I want three people to jump and praise God for it right now that God is adding. Right there in your bedroom, I want you to get up right now, right there on your job. Get up and say, God is adding to my situation. I, I, I want to talk to some people. Take your seat. I, I, give me about 15 minutes. I, I want to talk to some people that for the last 10 and a half months, last 10 months, you... You felt like God has been taken away from you. Folk have walked out. Folk have left your life. I need you to make an announcement first. You ought to celebrate everybody that left your life. Because that simply means they cannot go into the next season of your life. God is bringing new people into your life. As I always say, to take you where you've never been, to get what you never had. Somebody has your name on their mind. I need you to understand what has happened the last 10 months. God said there is an expiration date on it right now. You are going to the greatest season of your life. You're going to a place, but just before God takes you there, 
look like you have to lose everything. And I came to make an announcement. If you at the bottom right now, that means there's no other place to go but up right now. God is taking you to higher heights and deeper. I need somebody to shout in here. I'm going higher. You must understand that whatever, I, I, I'm going to make an announcement. Whatever report that you've gotten prior to right now, God said, I just canceled it in your life. Y'all don't know when to shout. Look at your neighbor one more time down your road and say, whatever report you came here with, God said, I just canceled it. Because eyes have not seen, ears, you ain't helping me preach, apostle. Ears have not heard. So you must understand that that there are some things in your life that God said, don't holler like that, don't do that. There are some things in your life that God says, I'm not going to do it right now, but I need you to endure it. Tonight, I want to speak to some people in here that God is giving you the anointing to endure what you're going through. You, I, I'm not going to tell you you're going to come out right away, but I am going to tell you that God is going to let you endure everything that you've been going through. Let, let's bring in Hezekiah tonight. Hezekiah was known as a good king. He, he broke the curse of his father. His father was, don't holler at me like that, cousins. His father was considered a bad king. The Bible shares with us in the 18th chapter, he ruled for 29 years. Hezekiah ruled for 29 years. He was 25 years old when he took over the kingdom. Now, now I, I, this is important because you need to understand where I'm going. Hezekiah, 25 years old, ruled 29 years. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Unlike his dad, he removed the high places. He moved the idols out of the way. He got rid of the brazen serpents of Moses. He trusted the Lord. God, don't tune up yet. I ain't ready. He trusted the Lord, his God of Israel. After that, y'all ain't saying nothing. There was none like Hezekiah before or after. He did everything that the Lord commanded him. And the Bible says, and he prospered. Well, 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 everything sounds good to me. I didn't come to argue with you tonight. Why do bad things happen to good people? There, there are some things, Bishop Cousins, we will never understand. Well, 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 for, 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 for 19 chapters and a few verses extra, uh, Hezekiah had victory in his life from the 18th chapter until the 20th chapter. But, but. I, I got confused because Hezekiah did nothing. Don't stand up at me like that, cousin. Hezekiah did nothing wrong. He, he, didn't, he didn't cuss God. He didn't, he didn't cheat God. Matter of fact, he led the people into victory. But, but I'm puzzled here because in the 20th chapter, there's something I don't understand. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Well, well I'm, I'm not understanding it because how in the world could he be sick unto death and he did everything right? I, I'm glad you asked that question. My pastor tells me every now and then, say, Doc, you got to ask a question in order to get in the thing. So I want to ask you a question. Some of you that are sitting here today, you're saying, Bishop Davis, why am I going through what I'm going through and I've done nothing wrong? Understand, you ain't got to do nothing wrong for the enemy to attack your body. There are some folk that are watching me right now. You have got folk believing that you have sinned, the reason why you're going through. You're not going through because you've done anything wrong. I need you to understand that God got to get the glory out of everything that you're going through. Look down your road and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, God got to get the glory. Got, got to get the glory. The, the reason why, uh, uh, Shabbat, the reason why you're going through, don't stand up, man, sit down. The reason why, the reason why you're going through in public is because God wants to give you public victory. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some of you are going through in front of everybody and saying, God, I wish you hadn't let it happen in the pain, uh, uh, behind the scenes. But God said, I didn't let it happen behind the scenes because when God give you the victory, I want everybody to know. In those days was Hezekiah not, 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 cousins, I know you matriculated in the school of higher learning, but, but I looked all the way through the Bible, and, and I tried to figure out, I tried to figure out, I say, why was he sick? What, what sick? Some things the Bible doesn't even uh, give an answer to. We'll understand it better by and by. There are some things that we go through, we don't know, Kurt, why we go through it. There are some things that we go through, we don't even know why God is allowing it. I don't know why he got sick, but I do know he was sick. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Church your neighbor say, I'm going through something right now. And I don't even know why I'm going through it. But I do know this one thing. When I come forth, I'm coming forth. Check somebody and say, I'm coming forth. That's pure gold. When I come out of this, I'm not shame of what I'm going through. Because when I come out of it, I'm coming out. Then was his. Hold on. Uh, mm, yeah. Yeah, bring me down there, son. Then was Hezekiah. Well, here comes the prophet. You know we need a prophet. That's why I surround myself with prophets. The prophets are going to speak tonight. Then was Hezekiah uh, sick. And then here comes Isaiah, the prophet. You need a prophet. You, you need somebody to speak God's oracles in your life. You need somebody to give you direction. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The Bible says God would do nothing in the earth except he reveals it to his servant, the prophet. Some of you preachers, you're trying to preach and you need a prophet to come in. The prophet walks in and says, Miss Audrey, you go. going, she's an undertaker, so you understand this. Uh, uh, there's a plug for your business. Uh, he said, he said, man of God, God sent me here to tell you to set your house in order. No, 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 no. Some folk, a cousin, they would say that that meant that uh, he had some things in himself that he didn't know. No, that ain't what that meant. That meant get your house together. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Get your insurance together. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Talk to the undertaker. But that's not the only thing. I was talking to Prophet McKinstry and we were going back and forward. You must understand that he had a son also that was going in the way of his father. And God was giving him another chance. God said, I'm not going to change him, but I'm going to let you change the condition. The Bible says, give me this one right here. The Bible says, the Bible says, he said, set your house in order because you're going to die. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It, it ain't no other way. You're going to die. Set your house in order for you truly going to die. That's what God says. Some of you that are watching me right now, you got a bad report. Some of you watching me right now, the doctor done told you you're not going to live. Did you hear the testimony? The woman was prepared, were preparing for a funeral. Some of you went to the doctor. You said you got type 2 diabetes. Some of you say get ready because you got high blood pressure. Some of you say you have to move out of that building because you can't afford it. But the devil is a liar. I don't care what the report says. Whose report will you believe? We shall. Somebody jump up and say, the devil is a liar. Yeah! Set. I'm almost done. Set. I'm going somewhere. Your house in order. Because you're going to die. Now you got to choose whether or not you're going to believe the death sentence. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm going somewhere. You, 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 got, you got to choose whether or not you're going to believe what, what your death sentence is. Yeah. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. The Bible says the prophet walks out of the room. He goes into the courtyard leaving because he's spoken. See, a real prophet don't stay long. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The real prophet comes in and says what he got to say and don't care what you think about it. But there is a place in God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That no matter what the death sentence is, y'all ain't saying nothing. If I can lift up my eyes to the hills, with cometh my help. David said, you know why David said that? He said, if I can be out there in battle and if I can just see where the ark, the presence of God is, y'all ain't saying nothing. I know God will help me fight my battle. The Bible says, I'm coming, Keisha. I'm coming, don't rush me. The Bible says, the Bible says, look what Hezekiah does. The Bible says, Hezekiah turns his face. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Cause I'm gonna give you the mic in a minute. Don't preach for me. I, he said he turned his face to the wall and he began to pray. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, God, you know I've been faithful to you. God, you know I've done right in your sight. God, you know I tore down the idols. God, you know I brought the glory back. God, you know I ain't did nothing wrong. Every now and then you got to call God to remembrance of what it is that you've done. You've lived right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Bible says he prayed and then he wept. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He prayed and then he wept. He prayed and then he wept. He prayed and then he, he, he worshiped. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He prayed. And while he was praying, touch your neighbor, say neighbor. God's about to turn it around. While he was praying, the Bible says the prophet, come here, prophet Jennings, come here. While he was praying, he was, he was praying, the prophet was stopped right there in his tracks. God told him, he said, go back. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. That evil report that you got, that death sentence that you got, is getting ready to turn into a life sentence. Y'all will get it tomorrow. Y'all will get it tomorrow. God said, whatever was just told you, I'm getting ready to give you a turnaround season. This is what it says. I'm done. This is what it says. This is what it says. This is what it says. The prophet goes back to him and say, God told me to tell you. Are y'all ready? Here's the next thing. He prayed. He cried. Prophet come back. The prophet said, here's what God is doing. He said, because of your prayers, I'm adding. I came to talk to 93 million homes. I came to talk to 200 countries. God said we are in the season of harvest. And God said he's not taken away. He's adding to your life. He's adding to your bank account. He's adding to your business. He's adding to your family. Ooh. Look at somebody and say, God is not taken away no more. God is adding to my life. He's adding to my ministry. He's adding to my anointing. Pastor, the devil told you to close that church up. But the devil is a liar. He said, I'm adding to that church. I'm not closing up. I'm adding. I know, I know, I know, I know you went to the doctor last week and they gave you an evil report. But God said he's got another report. I'm coming, Keisha. He said, I'm adding to your life. He said, not only am I adding, not only am I adding, not only am I adding, 
Not only am I adding, but I'm going to heal you. Hold on, hold on. He prayed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He, he, he wept. Uh-huh. The prophet came back. God said, I'm adding. But not only am I adding, I'm healing your body. I'm giving you 15 more years. What the devil said, it has been canceled over your life. God sent me here tonight. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever been to the place before you thought you were down for the last time? You thought you had lost everything. You thought you was going to lose your mind. Some of you, and you need to understand that God is not a God of deduction. He is a God of addition. He don't take away, he adds. Sometimes God puts us back against the wall just so that we'll trust him more. Can you trust him even when you get an evil report? Bible says, hold on. Bible says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add. Give you 15 more years. I'm going to heal your body. I'm closing. I'm going to heal your body. I'm adding 15 more years. Don't worry about getting your business together. You got 15 years to get it together. Not only that, but you know they're Syrians. Your haters, don't worry about them because I'm putting a protection around the city. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up, don't you preach on me, church, came upon me to eat faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They I'm coming. I got guests. He said, Watch this. He said, He said, He said, I'm adding. Somebody say adding. adding. Say adding. adding. And it ain't going to be one plus one, it's two. Right. Y'all ain't saying that. Put up the checkbook. Because it ain't never going to be balanced. God said, I'm doing my addition. Your one plus one is going to equal a thousand. Because I'm adding. The next 59 days, get ready for addition in your life. Say he said, he said, he said, I'm done. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Watch it, y'all, I'm done. God tells the prophet, go tell him I heard his prayer. Seen your tears, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to do it in three days. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm going to do it in three days. I'm going to do it in three days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to do it in three days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Somebody ain't holding on to this. I'm going to do it in three days. I'm going to add 15 years to your life. Not only that, but I'm going to save the city from your enemies. I'm putting a shield of protection around you. Play softly. God said, I'm adding to you. The next 59 days, we are in a season of harvest. God said, I'm adding, I'm adding value to you. After you suffered a little while, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, jump again, woman, jump again, jump again, jump again, jump again. Jump again. Jump again, jump again, jump again, jump again, jump again, jump again, jump again. He said, I'm adding. Matter of fact, everything on this road go to jumping. Everything on this road, he said, I'm adding. Everything that you lost, you sold in tears. 
Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Sir, Bishop Cousin, get ready. Y'all sit down. I, I, this is the way I feel like going. Those of you, those of you that are watching right now, I ask them to get this ready. Sit down. There are 1,000 of you. God said, Bishop Cousin, come on, y'all just get him ready. God said, I'm getting ready to pour the all of joy for the spirit of heaviness. Matter of fact, everybody in this studio need to get it. Shatana man did a bow shend in a man. What I am my shame. What I am my shat in a bow shay. Lana ma shata. There are one thousand of you. I struggled all day long in my spirit. But there's 1,000 of you. The next 59 days, I don't care about the next six days who's going to be president. That's already in God's hand. Because the heart of the king, if it's Trump, God will trump him. There's 1,000 of you. I want to send this healing oil to you tonight. I want you to sow a seed of $59. Put it on your new business. God is adding to your business. $59 seed, those that are watching. Prophet McKinstry, Prophet Alvernus, Pastor Dana, hit the phones. $59 seed right now. I want to send... 1,000 of you, this bottle of oil, I'm going to pray over them. I'm going to show you praying. I'm going to show me praying over them. A seed of 59. Why $59? Where's Prophet McKinstry? 59. Isaiah 59 talks about having victory over your enemy. Psalms 59, having victory over your enemy. The last thing, the last thing, the last thing, I didn't mean to go this way. I didn't mean to go this way. But the last thing that it says is that he began to give him victory over his enemies. Yeah. Bible says that he put a shield around the city over the Assyrians. God said that's what he's getting ready to do every enemy in your life. He's adding, but he's also going to give you a shield. You know what he still just told me? He said he's not going to add to let you go through a hell. Right now, there's 1,000 of you. You're picking up the phone. I want to call your names throughout the rest of this program. We got almost an hour left. I want to call your name. 1,000 of you, I want to send this bottle of oil. I'm going to touch every last one of them. 1,000 of you that was so $59, 60 seconds profit. And Bishop, also in 59, it also talks about in Psalms 59 where he's going to also vindicate your name. Some of your enemies has been is putting your name out there. Some people's names going to be vindicated through this. And also in Isaiah 59, Bishop, it also talks about on how he's going to deal with the your enemy the way they have dealt with you. He's going to deal with them. So whatever they try to pay to you, he's going to deal with it and going to pay them right back. Ain't no need for you to fuss. Ain't no need for you to cry. Ain't no need to wallow in your situation because God got your back. Ain't no need to worry what tonight is going to bring. Mm. It'll be all over in the morning. Come on, say it. In the morning. Morning. Come on, say it'll be all over in the morning. Say it for me, sir. Say it. Lift your hand. Morning. It'll be all over in the morning. I can't. 
seen a lick, but I'm going to seen anyhow. One thousand of you that will sow that seed. Eight five five. Prophet, go to the prayer room. Y'all go to the prayer room. Eight five five. Seven three zero word. Watch this. Prophet, come on. Hezekiah said, "How will I know this? How am I gonna know this?" The man of God took a little little fig and laid it on his leg. Apparently, he couldn't walk. He said, because in three days, you're going to walk into the temple. In other words, you're going to do something you couldn't do. He said, but what do you want to see? He said, you want the sundial to go up or you want it to go back? He said, going up is too easy. He said, make it go back. This weekend, what's happening? Time is going back. God said as the time goes back, as you turn the dial back across the world, God said it's going to be a sign. It's a new season. Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout! Scream! Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Ooh, <laughs> I'm going to take a break. This young man is a prophet teacher, preacher, whatever God gives you for the next 15 minutes. You brought your people here from Cincinnati. Speak to the people of God. I'm tagging you in. 855-730-WORD. We're going to the prayer. I'm going to run over there right quick. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and look at your neighbor and tell them it's the time of harvest. Oh, I need you to say that like you believe God for it. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's the time of harvest. Come on, tell them three more times. It's the time of harvest. It's the time of harvest. It's the time of harvest. Now, the only people that should be quiet are the people that don't have a seed in the ground. But if you've got a seed in the ground anywhere, if you've got a seed of faith in the ground, if you've got a seed of praise in the ground, if you've got a seed of prayer in the ground, if you've got a seed of service in the ground, look at somebody on your left and your right and tell them it's the time of the harvest, 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 harvest. It's the time of the harvest. Oh, I wish you'd say that like you mean it. It's the time of the harvest. I don't know how long you've been waiting, but however long you've been waiting, the Holy Ghost sent me here to tell you that the promise is still good. Some of you have been waiting years. Some of you have been waiting months. Some of you have been waiting weeks. Some of you have been waiting days. But however long you've been waiting, the promise is still good. Good. Look at somebody tell them it's still good. 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 Promise is still good. As Bishop mentioned, I've just off of the plane from Greece, took a group of about 40 saints to Greece, and for the last several days we've been touring. Athens and Corinth and Mycenae and we went to the Isle of Patmos and saw the cave where John received the revelation of the Lord and one of the things that the Lord ministered to me is I was on the plane nine hours from Paris into Cincinnati then another plane from Dayton here one of the things that the Lord ministered to me is how it was that the Greeks began to make the change from mytho mythological understanding into Christianity they got to the point in mythology with all of the Greek gods where they began to recognize that there was no value in them serving 
their idol gods. God is so wise because there's sometimes in our lives where God will allow a thing to run its course, not because it is God's will that we have it, but because God uses it as an opportunity to prove to us that until we get to the place where we can recognize that he and he alone is enough for us, sometimes God will allow us to lean upon these things. And so in Acts chapter 17, the apostle Paul calls them out because they have an idol even unto the unknown God. And he says that the real God is a God that is not made by stone or wood, neither is he served by man's hands. It was at this point in the Greek and the Athenian culture that they began to make the change and the transition from being a mythological society to being a philosophical society. And even then they were close, but they were still so far away. And so Paul ministers to them in Acts chapter 17 that it is only through Jesus Christ in him we live, we move, and we have our very being that they would ever have the satisfaction that they desire. There are some people that are watching tonight on the Word Network and some that are in this studio and in the overflow areas that are hurting because you've been placing your trust in the wrong places. There's some people that are in pain because you, you made your boo a God and no matter how sweet your boo is, your boo makes a terrible God. I wish I had somebody that would talk back to me in here. There's some people that are hurting because you put your trust and your confidence in your automobile and no matter how shiny and pretty your automobile is, your automobile makes a terrible God. There's some people that are hurting because you put your confidence in your house or in your career or in your education and no matter how much education you have or how fine and wonderful your house is, your house and your education makes a terrible God. It's only when we get to the place and when we get to the point where God and God alone is enough, where we want God to do it not for us but for his glory. God's glory is invisible and so he takes the invisibility of his glory and he places it on the visibility of your need. I know that God is a healer when I look at you and I see you healed. I know that God is a deliverer when I look at you and I see you delivered. I know that God is a way maker when I look at you and I see that God has made a way for you. So whenever God puts you under the burden of anything, it's not because he doesn't like you or he's got it in for you, but it's because he trusts you. Some people cannot be trusted with trouble because the moment trouble comes, they tuck their tails, they denounce their faith. It takes a special kind of Christian to be trusted with trouble. It takes a special kind of believer to be lied on and take a licking and keep on ticking. It takes a special kind of disciple, a special kind of follower of Jesus Christ to sow and not see a harvest but continue to sow anyway. And whenever God puts you in something and you think you cannot handle it, that just means God knows more about you than you know about yourself. And in order for you to know what you don't know, but God already knows Knows. God knows what you need to go through so you will know what you did not know but you need to know and you will come out knowing what you didn't know and knowing that you know that you know that you know that you know that this suffering is but for a present time and it's not worthy to be compared to the glory lift up your hands and shout glory to the glory that shall be revealed in us see you cannot get what God has for you until you want it more for him than you want it for yourself when you get to the point where you want it for God instead of wanting it for you that's when God will step in and give it to you thank you Bishop for reminding us about Hezekiah because that lets me know that diagnosis does not mean death that whenever God allows you to be able to see a thing he's given you a chance to pray that's not your time to tuck your tail and go in your corner and cry that's your chance and your opportunity to pray and somebody in here has been to God in prayer and you can testify that when you pray either God will change it or God will change you that when you pray God will either take it off of you or he will give you the grace that you need in order to be able to bear it I don't know who I'm preaching to in here tonight that needs to lift up your hands and say Lord let the healing begin let the spiritual healing begin there are people that are watching that are enduring church hurt how, church hurt. how do you know when you've been healed spiritually you know you've been healed spiritually when Christ is enough Look at your neighbor on your left and your right and say Christ is enough. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but then lose his soul? You know you've been healed spiritually when Christ is enough. There are people that need emotional healing. How do you know you've been healed emotionally when you're no longer making decisions?
decisions that are rooted in fear, the past or shame, when you don't require an apology, that's when you know you've been healed emotionally. When you can forgive people and they haven't even apologized, that's how you know you've been healed emotionally. When you can smile at people and you know they've been talking about you, that's how you know you've been healed emotionally. When you can shake people's hand, they've been digging ditches for you, that's how you know you've been healed emotionally. Some people need to be healed relationally. How do I know I've been healed relationally? When you're no longer making decisions to punish somebody or to prove to somebody that you're good enough, but you know you've been healed relationally. When you don't do it for them, but you do it for yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, I declare you to be healed in your relationships. Make no more decisions trying to punish somebody. Make no more decisions trying to prove anything to anybody. When you get to the point where you don't make decisions to punish anybody or to prove anything to anybody, that's how you know you've been healed relationally. Somebody in here need to be healed socially. How do you know when you've been healed socially? When you no longer categorize an entire social group based on the action or the inaction of a few. Somebody knows America has had it tough. Violence in the streets. Chicago murder at all time high. Right now in Cincinnati, there's a white police officer on trial for killing a black man. But somebody also knows that everybody your color ain't your kind. You know you've been healed relationally. You know you've been healed socially. When you don't judge an entire group based on the actions of one, but then somebody in here need to be healed from sexual identity. I've been noticing a feminine spirit in the body of Christ. I know it ain't politically correct, and I may not get the microphone again, but while I got it, I might as well call it out. You know you've been healed from sexual identity issues when your flesh is no longer your authority. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I believe God for healing in every area of my life. Is there anybody in here that can give God the praise for spiritual healing? That can give God the praise for relational healing? That can give God the praise for social healing? That can give God the praise for sexual healing? That can give God the praise for financial healing? When your money is funny and your change is strange. Somebody knows the Lord will take $20 and make it last to your next payday. Get your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, it's time for me and you to develop healthy habits. Come on, talk to him like you mean it. Tell him it's time for me and you to develop healthy habits. Prayer is a healthy habit. Praise is a healthy habit. Worship is a healthy habit. Fasting is a healthy habit. Singing is a healthy habit. Meditating is a healthy habit. You say, preacher, why must I develop healthy habits? Because you don't choose your future. You choose your habits. And your habits choose your future. You didn't catch that. You don't choose your future. You choose your habits. And your habits choose your future. So the question you got to ask is, are my habits getting me to the future that I want? I'm giving the microphone back. But is there anybody in here that got a habit of praise? I can't hear you. Is there anybody in here that got a habit of praise? I can't hear you. Is there anybody in here that got a habit of lifting up the name of the Lord? If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all me under me. Jesus.
Jesus. I need somebody to help me lift him. Lift him for your healing. Lift him for your joy. Lift him for your peace. Lift him for your harvest. Lift him for your increase. Lift him for your miracle. We're getting ready to go higher. Lift him like you love him. Say it. Say it. Decide your future. And it's important that as the body of Christ, as Bishop stands here the first Wednesday of every month, he could be anywhere in anybody's church. He turns down engagements to do this. He would never tell you that. But I will tell you that he turns down appointments to be here. Encouraging us and admonishing us to develop habits that will sustain the healing that God has for us. Lift your hands if you believe God for it. Now take them hands and put them together. Come on. What a word. Bishop, why are you having all these words? Because by the time we get to the end of the program, we only going to pray for your healing for five, ten minutes. Because guess what? All you have to do is receive it. Because what we're doing right now, we're building your faith. We're building you up in your most holy faith. Man of God, God's going to blow your mind. You hear what I'm saying? Just go lay hands on him. God, God's going to blow your mind. You think you're starting something real small. Lift your hands. But God's going to blow. I'm, I'm going to take this oil. God's going to blow your mind. He's going to blow your mind. That auto, you think you're just going to sell a few cars. But God said he's getting ready to do exceedingly. Dealership, that's it. Come here, Apostle Jennings. Just come quick, quick. Where's he at? Quick. Dealership. Put your hand, and he's coming to Atlanta, so that's why I got you. Oh, Stand on your feet. I will not come here every Wednesday just to have a show. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Because to have a show. This is a healing service. People are going to come from all over the world on the first Wednesday to be healed. Get your ticket for the first, first Wednesday in December. I don't know where we're going to put you, but just come on. Just hang out at the door somewhere. We got them in the overflow. People from Cincinnati, they're in the overflow. They're in the boardroom everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Dell. Come help me read, sir. Those that, are, those that are with me for the healing Bible. Listen, we want to thank God for those of you that think enough of your faith to invest in your faith. Get ready, Kevin. Romans 10 says, faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. We're thankful for Sharico all the way from Georgia. Come on, let's give it up. Celestine from California, Maurice from New York, Cherie from LA, Iris from Mississippi, Christina from California, Tanya from Georgia, Annette from Michigan, Barbara from New York, Roscoe from Virginia. That's those that sold the 109. 109. The healing Bible is on its way to you. God's raising up that army. Those of you that, listen, they tell me the phone lines are jammed. Let me promise you this. They will call you back before the night is over with. They're going to stay here. If you're on voicemail, don't worry about it. And don't be doing that. Don't be saying, you know what? The anointing has gone now. 
No. So that seed. Bridget, go ahead. Bridget from Virginia. $59. $59. Annie from Alabama. Celestine been given all night long. She's on both lists from New York. Clarice from New Jersey. Gwen from Texas. Latanya from uh, Nebraska. Shirley from Virginia. Deborah from Illinois. Kavanda from Louisiana. Sherry from Georgia is representing hard tonight. Come on. Sharon from New York. Stanley from Alabama on the 109 list. Jacenia from Michigan, Annie from Florida, Sherry from Georgia. Let's give it up for the incredible and amazing people of God. And Bishop even had prayer requests. Bishop, thank you so much. I want to tell you how much we appreciate you. you. I have the privilege of having a personal relationship with you. Not only as a friend, but as a big brother in the ministry you are to me. You know, I call you my Andrew. You're always opening doors for me. Thank you, Bishop, for at this stage and this season of your life for continuing to spiritually shape us and form us toward what the prophetic looks like. Thank you, Bishop. We appreciate you. And thank you for holding us accountable to prayer. Come on. Can you give it up for the man of God? Bishop, thank you. Listen, there's 1,000 of you tonight. As we go to Kevin, he's going to sing. I want those phones to ring. Y'all can be seated. 855 Sit down, Ms. Audrey. 855 I know what she ready to do. She ready to sow and get her oil. 855-730. Word. I want to send to 1,000 of you a bottle of oil. You're not buying the oil. You're helping us preach the gospel every first Wednesday. I come on every day, five days a week at 1 p.m. live right here. $59 seed. There are many of you in the studio. You're going to do the same tonight. I want you to sow that seed. If the line is busy, keep trying. They're going to call you back. Sing Kevin Stewart. Y'all follow Kevin Stewart now. Get him at your church. Have him come sing. He's an awesome worshiper. He's my new worshiper. Yes, he is. Y'all get him. Sing. to praise him so let's just praise the lord i got a right to praise him you got a right to praise him we got a right to praise him so let's just praise the lord everybody say you got a right to praise him
Man, there's such a rich anointing in this place tonight. My soul loves you. You know, somebody told me I done became a crybaby as I get older. But man, such a great, great, great opportunity that God has given me. I'm going to say it again. The son of a prostitute. If I can stand here, you can stand anywhere. I'm not perfect, but God, God is using us. My friend, my new friend, I was down there in Georgia. and I'm coming back. Down there in Georgia, preached for him and he sat with me for two days on our daily show. Did I tell you we have a daily show? One o'clock every day. I said it three times. He's going to come prophesy to you. And then he, in about 15 minutes, we're going to call out sickness and disease. We're going to pray for some of you in the studio. Because your faith is being built. So praise team, get ready. Receive from the Harvest Church. Apostle Travis Jennings. God bless you, Bishop. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise tonight. Come on, come on, from coast to coast, from around the world, give God the best praise you got. Come on, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Open your mouth and give Him praise right there. I came to tell you, your miracle is in the room. Wherever you may be tuning in from, your miracle is in the room. And those that are in this studio audience, your miracle is in the room. Do me a favor and grab a little real good and say, neighbor, Whatever you've been going through, as of tonight, it's over. Because weeping is a visitor. She can only stay one night. Joy is coming. Somebody give God praise for joy. Somebody give God praise for joy. Somebody give God praise for joy. You may be sitting. When I got the call from the great man of God, Bishop Davis, I thank God for him for allowing my wife and I to come and share. He said, Apostle Jennings, I want you to come prophetically. He said, I'm not looking for a sermon. I'm not looking for a three-part in the close. I need to hear what God is saying for this season and what God is saying for the people of God. Brothers and sisters, God spoke to me. He says, Travis, I want you to take them, amen, to Isaiah 42 and 9. Isaiah 42 and 9 says it like this. Behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare before they spring forth I tell you of them oh I heard the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost say that this is the time and the season now ah, that you're getting ready to shift into a new season someone shout new season and I came to tell you, brother and sister, amen, God wants to change and expand our spirituality. And when your spirituality begins to expand, then your mentality begins to change. Oh, let me say it again. I said God's going to change and expand your spirituality. And when your spirituality begins to change, then your uh, mentality will begin to change. And when your mentality begins to change, your reality 
will begin to tell. I came to tell you what you've been experiencing is over. God's about to do exceeding abundantly and above all that you can ever ask or think. Do me a favor, slap a neighbor high five and say, neighbor, things are about to change for me. Oh, not, 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 not yet, not yet. He said, things are about to change for me. He said, try to tell them what I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to shape them and shift them into a new season. And anytime I give you a new season, I'm going to give you a new garment. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I'm getting ready to shift you and turn your season around. And when I turn your season around, I'm going to give you a new garment. I don't know who I came for tonight, but I came as a prophet of God to tell you the garment of praise is about to hit your life. The garment of righteousness is about to hit your life. And so as it were, I was in prayer. And the Lord said, Travis, like I did, amen, for King Saul. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament that prophet Samuel was grieving over King Saul. And God said, Samuel, why are you crying over what I have already skipped over? I came to talk to some people, amen, that you don't have next, you got now. Tell somebody, I don't got next. I got now, baby. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. I came to talk to that person that you've been going through pain. You've been going through pressure. You've been going through perplexity. And it seems like every force of the enemy is trying to cause you, amen, to break your faith. Trying to cause you, amen, to give up on God. I came to speak to every entrepreneur that this is your season. You need to sow a seed right now of $59. There are 300 of you that need to call in 855-730-WORD because your season is shifting right now. Somebody shout, my season is shifting. And so what God said here, he said, Samuel, why are you crying over what I have already skipped over? Even God, uh, God said to him, he said, Travis, many people are still in the past of my glory. And they have not made it to what I'm doing now. Meaning this, they're stuck in memory. They're stuck in was. They're stuck in then. So God said here, what I'm doing, I'm shifting my people into a new season. And he says, Travis, think it not strange that we've just entered into a new month. Shout a new month. A new month, the month of November. And see, we just entered the 11th month. And the 11th, uh, the 11th month, and 11 in the scripture could denote confusion. It could denote chaos. It could denote, amen, conflict. But it also denotes increase. It also denotes double. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. The spirit of the Lord spoke to me about you. And those who are viewing that you've been in a season of chaos, a season of conflict, a season of confusion. But now you just entered your 11th month. And the 11th month also denotes increase and also denotes harvest. The spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, listen, Travis, I need you to go back to the Old Testament. That was a guy that had 12 children. And his 11th child was Joseph. I'm ready now. He said his 11th child was Joseph. And that Joseph is not just considered, amen, the 11th child. But Joseph is considered the dreamer. Tell your neighbor the dreamers are coming. And the Lord said, if you, as you begin to sow this seed, he meant the dream on the inside of you. The vision on the inside of you is getting ready to come forth. There's some people in this audience right now, even in this viewing audience, even in this physical audience, that you have dreams on the inside of you. You got passion on the inside of you. God has called you, amen, for more than ministry. There's a marketplace anointing on the inside of you. And you've been waiting for God to shift you from where you are to where you know you've been called to be. All I need about 50 people in here to give God a praise if you know the dreamers are coming. Shout the dreamers are coming. Shout the dreamers are coming. 
the trailblazers are coming. The world changers are coming. The global shifters are coming. The trendsetters are coming. The earth shakers are coming. Tell somebody, I'm in my 11th month. And Joseph is coming. And I came to prophesy to every hater, every witch that tried to kill you. Let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Do me a favor and tell somebody that the dreamers are coming. Come on, tell them the dreamers are coming. I feel churchy right about now. That's going to be a... Stop the music. Listen here. So not only is this the 11th month, not only is this is the time of increase and double, not only is this the time that Joseph is coming. Shout, I'm in my 11th month now. And the 11th is the dreamer's month. So in the next 59 days, God's about to take you from revelation to manifestation. Tell your neighbor, I got to sow this seed of $59 tonight because this seed is only a down payment for what's getting ready to happen in my life. The Lord spoke to me and me and Bishop had not even discussed. We did not share what I was going to share tonight. But also, not only is the, the dreamers are coming, you're in the 11th month. Now, this is the month in a few days this weekend that we begin to fall back. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Tell your neighbor, in the next 59 days, the spirit of extra is about to hit your life. Oh, y'all yeah, too quiet. Come on, drum. I said the spirit of extra. Uh, it's about to hit your life. Uh, do me a favor and grab somebody good. Uh, and shout, neighbor, uh, the spirit of extra. Uh, it's about to hit your life. Uh, extra joy. Uh, extra peace. Uh, extra anointing. Uh, shout extra. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Uh, Busking ready. Uh, to cause your enemies uh, to read about your success. Uh, God's getting ready uh, to cause your player hater uh, to read about your success. Uh, open your mouth and shout extra. Listen, what we're getting ready to do in the earth realm would be added an extra hour. All right, the 11th month, the dreamers are coming. World changes are coming. Trendsetters are coming. God's getting ready in the realm of the spirit about to give you an extra hour to complete your assignment. Tell your neighbor, you ain't dropping this one. God is giving you extra time. He's giving you extra grace. He's giving you extra anointing. For the race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong. But he that endures until the end, grab your neighbor real good and say, neighbor, get ready. This is the month for birthing out. This is the month for coming through. This is the month for coming forth. Divine development, divine progress, divine fulfillment, maturity, increase open doors, opportunities, and chances. Tell your neighbor, get ready. This is my day. This is my time. This is my hour. Show ya. Wait a minute, Bishop. Not only, not only is this the 11th month and the spirit of the Lord said, he said, this is the season for Joseph. This is the season. I'm, I'm going to stop here. But this is the season for Joseph. He also said, look at November. November. In Latin. November in Latin means nine. While you were celebrating birthing in September, God said for those 
that your manifestation didn't come in September. He says November is also a birthing month. And what I'm getting ready to do, I'm getting ready to give you everything the locusts have eaten up, everything the canker worm, the palmer worm. God said, get ready. I will restore unto you the joy of your salvation. I dare you to praise him. This is your season of coming forth. You need to call right now. 855-730-WORD. That seed of $59 needs to be sown into good ground. And as it, as it begins to soak into good ground, you're getting ready to position yourself under an open heaven. Joseph is coming. Everybody standing and lift your hands. Need the praise team. Lift your hands. Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, the eleventh child of Jacob. Is coming. It's coming. The dreamers. The dreamers. You, you don't know this, but on the 16th, I'll be hosting our harvest revival. And I'm gonna be offering my book that I wrote some years ago. And it's called The Dreamers Are Coming. I'm telling you, it's coming. They're coming. Marketplace and ministry. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Father, we give you praise. Betty from Mississippi. Yolanda Willie May from North Carolina. Sheila. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Annie from Massachusetts. Whatever God gives you, Kevin. Ah, Lord. You are Lily, Georgia. You are Alpha. Lift your hands. And Omega. Deborah from Georgia. Norman, Doris, Takima, Melody, Deborah. Darius, Virginia, Dolores, North Carolina, Beatrice, North Jersey, Dolly, South Carolina, Michael, Lottie from Florida, Robert, keep calling, they're going to call you back, don't give up tonight, Elaine, South Carolina, Eddie, Florida, Prophets, if you got a word, get ready, Rosie, Georgia, Deborah, Karen, Florida, Barbara, California, Marion, Florida, Tanya, I keep hearing the Lord say, I'm on my way to, I'm going to bring the team to New York. I'm coming to New York. L listen, lift your hands. You are Alpha and Omega. 855-730-WORD, $59. While you were preaching and prophesying, see, people don't think you were prophesying because you didn't, Called one by one. Some call prophetic preaching. Right. That's right. See, the issue is some folk want a new word and you just need to work the word that you got. God said there are 10 business people that need to sow a seed of $590. $59 is nothing for you. None of this goes to me. I want to say that again. These preachers pay their own way here. We don't get paid for this. This is ministry. Where's the money going? So that we can keep the lights and the satellites. Did you hear what I said? We reach 93 million homes, 200 countries, 3 billion people across the globe. There are satellites all over this building that's reaching the heavens so that the gospel can be preached. I don't play with God. I don't play with God. I don't play with your money. I don't touch the money. God is about to touch you right now. Lift your hands. So, Father, we pray for diabetes. Lift your hands, everybody. If you got any pain in your body, touch it right now. Oh, he touched me. Yes. 
he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul something something come on happened I know he and he made me whole. So, Father, we pray now. Pray for high blood pressure. We pray for cancer. Somebody has an infection in your ear. God's touching you right now. Somebody, your lower back, your pain in your lower back. Somebody, the bloodstream in your legs. Yeah. So, Father, heal right now. I speak to somebody, you haven't been able to move your neck. God is touching you right now. So, Father, heal right now. Yeah. With your stripes, we are healed. God, touch migraine headaches. Somebody you're having pain from sinus infection. I want you to begin to call the number on the screen. Tell people, tell the people that you've been healed tonight. Y'all got a word? Anybody? Anybody? Bishop, Come quickly, Bishop, on quickly, tonight, quickly. On, on tonight, there's someone tonight, even on the bottom of their feet, where to where they every time that they step. There's been like a shooting pain coming right to their left leg tonight. You're being healed of that even right now tonight. Anybody else? Bishop, when we were speaking of Joseph, and you made your comments. The Lord wants someone to know that oh, it is it's, it's not something new that you need to believe, but it's a new way of believing. Sometimes the miracle is I still believe. Joseph's miracle was that he held fast to his faith and all that he went through. That was his miracle. Yes. And so yes. it's not something new to believe, but it is a new way of believing. Touch somebody and tell them I believe. And oh, Bishop, come on, come on. Bishop, there was someone quickly, you might be in this studio audience, there's a, there's a vision in pair in the left eye. If you're here, if it's in the studio, come now. Your left eye. God is healing. He's your cornea. Who is that? He's healing this individual right now. In the name of Jesus. If you have any sickness in your body, come now to this altar. This is the altar. Come from wherever you are. If there's any sickness in the audience, Prophet Johnson made me whole. Lift your hands. Oh, it is Jesus. Come on. This is the one right here, Bishop. Come on, speak. Man of God, God's getting ready. He, put your hand, come quickly, put your hand on your eye. On the yada da da ba rusko tobia. Brianda la la baha. I curse yande osa. There's that normality in Jesus' name. And I command him to be made whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And. Oh, it is she. Lift your hands. Yes, it is she. 855. I need somebody helping me. Preachers, we serve to for touch now. In Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Come on, lift your hands. Oh, it is. Oh, oh. Yes, it is. Let me hear y'all. It's Jesus. In my soul. For Lift your hand. Robasha. Romama. Shake up. Oh, it is. You got a word? It is 
spirit of depression yes. somebody in this studio you're suffering with depression the joy of the Lord tonight you will sleep like never before every tormented spirit Every spirit of the past that tries to come back and haunt you. There's a girl that's watching now. You were violated in your body by your father. Forgiveness is coming to your house right now. You're worried about your children. The same thing happened. The curse is broken now. Somebody is in the studio watching. You're trying to get out of something. God said, this is your hour tonight. It's over now. No more stormy days. It's over. Shatarama. Come against the spirit of depression. Anybody suffering with depression, lay hands on your head right now. I am the Lord. Your healer, I sent my word and healed your disease. Robosha, touch now. Robosha, I am the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, preachers. As God give it to you. Shata. Oh, Mama Sha. Oh, Mama, your healer. Right now. Right now. Q, come help me. Oh, Mama. Oh, oh, Mama. Touch now. Oh, oh, Mama. Pastor Janet. Mama Sha. We got three minutes. Get that 590 in the ground. Right now, those of you that were sold at $59, God is healing across the world. Lift your hands and receive it all over the world. I am the Lord. Set. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Robo shop. I am the Lord. I 
pastor in the brown. The pastor, the pastor. Come, pastor, quickly. We got two minutes. We're about to leave you. We're about to leave you. 855-730-WORD. I'm going to the prayer room in just a few minutes. We're going to call you. Give me word quickly. The Lord says, son, I'm getting ready to exalt you. I'm getting ready to expand Hell. you. I'm getting ready to dig you out. That's a fresh anointing coming upon you. That's an apostolic prophetic anointing coming upon you. And the Lord said, you shall take territory. Oh, the north, shot. south, east, and the west. God said, ministry shall grow and it shall flourish. I see books. I see crusades. I see revivals. The Lord said, you've been sitting there on the back side of the desert. But now I'm getting ready to thrust you forth into the palace, said the spirit of the living God. God said, don't worry. The money shall come. Matter I am the Lord. That is. Well, let the healing begin. presentation brought to you by the friends and partners of the word network all over the world problems give God all the glory we just uh, want to give him all glory and praise for this ministry and the people's lives that are impacted and changed pastor David Ibiame only on the word network Watching the largest African American religious network in the world. We are the Word Network. The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. The worst witness that we have in the world today is you can't hardly tell the Christians from anybody else. And we shouldn't have to think that people recognize us because we've got a fish on our car and a cross around our neck. I don't pay one bit of attention to that kind of stuff. It needs to be by our behavior, our fruit. How many of you want to be like Jesus? Are you sure? I mean, you're, you're really sure about this. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time. You're sure? Okay, well, let's take a look at a scripture, and then you can tell me how sure you are. John 5, 30, Amplified Bible, wonderful scripture. I'm able to do nothing from myself. This is Jesus. I'm able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. Even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I am bidden to decide. As the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. And my judgment is right and just and righteous because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and the pleasure of the Father who sent me. Wow. Now, you'd have to read that probably 20 times for it to begin to soak in. Jesus said, whatever God tells me to do, whatever my Father tells me to do, that's what I do. I listen for him, I wait for him. 
When he shows me what to do, there's really no decision to make because I've already pre-decided that whatever God asks me to do, that's what I'm going to do. So after reading John 5.30, where he said, I don't follow my own will. I don't do what's pleasing to me. <laughs> I don't even consult my own will. When I hear God tell me to do something, I don't even ask myself what I think about it. Do I want to? Don't I want to? It's just a settled issue. Jesus said, it's, it's a settled issue. Already settled that one. Whatever God says, once I know what God is saying to me, then there's no more decisions to be made. Now, let me ask you again after hearing that, how many of you really want to be like Jesus? All right. Then I pray for you right now in Jesus' name that he will start a Holy Ghost revolution, a Holy Ghost takeover in your life, that he will invade your life, and that if he has to tie you to the altar to keep you from running away from him, that you will not be able to get away from God until he is able to do everything in your life that he wants to do. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. It says, we were chosen and foreknown by God the Father and consecrated. That means sanctified and made holy. That means set apart for a special purpose. Let me tell you something. You are not like everybody else out in the world who doesn't have Christ as their Savior. You don't get to do everything that they do. You don't get to act like they act. You have been, when the Holy Spirit came upon you, when Christ made you his home, he took you and set you apart for something special. He sanctified you, and in your spirit, he made you holy. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body, you're a tripart being. In your spirit, when Christ comes to live in you, you have everything that you need in there to live a godly life and to behave the way Jesus would if he were here doing it today. It's all in you. It's not a matter of what's in you. What I'm working on is trying to get it out of you. Philippians 2.13, work out your own salvation. That doesn't mean work for salvation. We know that we're saved by grace and grace alone. It's only God's undeserved favor that our sins are forgiven. But then he says, take this salvation that's been given to you as a gift and work out your own salvation now with fear and trembling. So after you receive Christ as your Savior, your number one goal in life from that point on should be to learn how to do everything that God wants you to do to let him own you and possess you entirely and to be of value to him. And let me tell you, the more you do that, the happier you're going to be. You're going to get so happy, people are going to think you're crazy if you give your whole life to God. It's our selfish self-centeredness that makes us unhappy. What does it mean to be sanctified? The Greek Vines Dictionary says the word sanctify means separation to God. Everybody say, I belong to God. I want, think about that. You belong to God. How many of you have maybe like a, I don't know. Well, we'll just use this as an example. This is my glass on the road when I'm traveling. This is this Joyce's glass. Nobody else drinks out of this glass. They don't use this glass for coffee. They don't use it to water the plants. This is my glass. This glass is set apart, <laughs> sanctified for a special purpose. <laughs> all right, now you all know what I'm talking about. You have certain things that you own, that you have them for a special purpose. You don't want your kids messing with them. You don't, you know, it's, it's like, this is for this. It's not for that. It's for this. Well, that's the way you are. You are set apart by God for a special purpose. 
As far as this world is concerned, we are strangers and aliens passing through. This is not our home. We are not to take up residence here and get rooted in the world. We are on our way somewhere, and while we're making the trip, we need to collect a whole bunch of people and take them with us. You have any idea how long eternity is? I mean, e even if you live to be a hundred, which very few people here will do that, but let's just say you even live to be a hundred, that is nothing compared to forever and ever and ever. So what? If there's a little bit of giving up something that you'd prefer not to give up for, so what? If we do, what God is asking us to do now, we can be of value to Him. We can have peace and joy, and we can be prepared to spend eternity in His presence. Don't just live your life like this is all you got. You're going to live forever. You're an eternal being. And maybe we don't think about that enough. I don't know. Set apart for a special purpose. And learning to live the life that is befitting to those that are so separated. Separation from evil things and evil ways. This is only made available to a person 